Hey guys and welcome to my Elite Dungeons 3 XP, GP and Invention Components Farming Guide. This is currently one of the best if not the best way to train in game experience wise while getting a lot of consistent money. So when you're ready grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Much like Elite Dungeons 1 token farming, you do not require very high level stats, but the higher level stats you have, the easier this is going to be, and the higher experience you can get per hour. However, much like all of the other Elite Dungeons, you can do it in a duo, trio, or completely solo. Now, I recommend these stats just because these are pretty much the minimum if you want to get a decent experience right here. However, you can, again, be carried by high level players, but I don't recommend leeching at a low level because this way you're going to ruin the low level to mid level experience for yourself if you just started playing RuneScape 3. However, if you're a main with an alt account, you can definitely do that. Now, there are many useful things you can bring here Enhanced Excalibur, Vampirism Aura, Penance Aura, other auras, damage boosting items, the Curse of the Blackstone quest for damage reduction, but we're not going to be covering that. You really don't need those things. However, they will help. But again, you can easily get the high experience rate and high GP per hour without those things. Now, one more time to clarify, you do not need to kill any bosses to do this. This is just trash mob farming. This is not a guide to all of the bosses of Elite Dungeons 3. As for the gear setups, I'm going to be taking those straight from my Elite Dungeons 1 guide because you're again going to be farming trash mobs, so you want to do as much AoE damage as possible. So for melee, take a scythe or halberd type weapon. For magic, take your magic setup. And having the corruption blast ability helps. For ranged, mechanized or normal chin chompers will help. But you can also just use a regular two-handed bow. So here are three mid-level player examples. And you will do just fine using this gear. However, you will have a very tough time because you take a lot of damage if you're doing this solo as a mid-level player. Although it's good experience, it's annoying if you have to bank often. So if you're a mid-level player watching this video, do this in a group of two or three. I highly recommend it. Now you can use an Amulet of Glory for your Amulet or a Blood Amulet of Fury if you have the spare money, but it's going to be costing you 10 mil. However, this item is literally useful almost everywhere and it's passive healing. Now I mentioned this in my Elite Dungeons 1 guide as well, but if you're a high level player and you have high tier degradable armor, it might be worth using lower tier armor instead to save money on repair and divine charge costs. But that's just me. I was using Bandos in the clips you're going to be seeing anyways. I wasn't using any tier 90 armor. In fact, I also have a clip of me doing it in Bandos with a crystal halberd. So a tier 70 weapon, halberd type weapon. And I took a lot of damage, but I still got an experience rate of 900k experience per hour. How crazy is that? So for your inventory setup, bring anything you have. So if you have an enhanced Excalibur, bring that along. If you have a Ring of Vigor, bring that along. If you have Sourdough and Brews and Sharks to tick heat, bring those along. If you don't, just bring along some food and your stat boosting potions. If you have overloads, use those because they will benefit you by a large margin. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter so much what you bring because it's again just trash mob farming and not any bosses. So don't worry too much about your inventory. Before we go any further, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get there. To get there easily is by making a group. You have to ready up, select the actual Shadow Reef, aka Elite Dungeons 3, then complete your group, and then you can actually teleport there. For some reason, the group system seems a bit buggy. I don't know what it is. Another way of actually getting there is by using your Ring of Kingship and going to the Dungeoneering Island, and then walking east towards the little boat where you can enter the Shadow Reef with. Once there, before actually going in, you want to right click and toggle the chest. This way it automatically collects all the loot, the juicy money, for you in the chest and you don't have to pick up anything. Now here's the arena overview or the floor we're going to be clearing. The only section we're going to be doing is from the entrance all the way up to the Leviathan boss. One run will take you approximately 5 to 8 minutes depending on your gear, stats and if you're solo or not. If you're doing this in a trio you can do that much and much faster. Now, apart from making GP, getting man experience gains, you can also encounter the occasional mini boss, which you can kill to get some dungeoneering tokens. Now, once you've completed a run and you've reached the end point, which looks like this, 
You then want to relog, aka go to the lobby and start a new instance. You do this by clicking on the entrance, choosing no, and then choosing normal mode. Now I'm not sure if this affects your drops per hour, but if you're doing this solo, once you've teleported there using the group system, or if you're using the max guild portal to get there, do not stay in your group, leave the group and go inside the shadow reef normally so that you get that extra solo buff of drops, I guess. Now onto the actual section trash mob farming guide. Now as a high level player, it's really straightforward. You want to just stack up the monsters and do as much AOE damage as possible using your corruption blast ability, dragon fire, chin chompers, or your abilities like quake and hurricane with your scythe or dragon rider lance. It's really easy and you can soul split through all of it. Although sometimes you may have to eat up a bit because you can get stacked up damage from large mob farms. Now, if you're a mid-level player, it is a bit more difficult and you're going to have to pray melee throughout the entire section pretty much to negate most of the damage if you don't have soul split of course. Now I tested this out myself with Bandos armor and a crystal halberd and that was with 99 stats and using a super melee potion. And I still struggled in terms of food to get towards the end. I just barely made it using Enhanced Excalibur and Sharks. So if you're a mid-level player using Bandles and a Crystal Halberd, for example, I think you may have to bank in between trips or just turn back earlier. Which isn't a bad thing, it's still good experience per hour, around 900k, but nowhere near the 1.5 million experience per hour without boosts, no experience boosts whatsoever I was getting with my Scythe and Drygores. And you can get the same experience rates with Magic and very close to these experience rates with Ranged. Which is ridiculous and this is why it's such a good method. This is insane experience per hour. It is absolutely fantastic. Now the melee clip you saw there only took me around 5 minutes and that was one run. Now that run I didn't get any rare relics which are a main part of the money maker. But I can show you guys my chest after just 5 minutes of a solo run. This is how it looks like. 420k in drops. Now most of the money is in salvage and in relics. Now the common ones are worth very little and you just want to disassemble those for invention components which is why I said this is also a good method to farm invention components with. The uncommon ones are worth 25k each so you can alk those for money or put those in an auto alker and just automatically alk them to save time. The rare relics are worth 1 million GP in alk price. And this is why this is such a good money maker. The main money you're making is in algables, meaning that this money maker, for the most part, is potentially infinite. And there's no way of it actually crashing. The only way it will become less money per hour is when Jagex actually nerfs it. Which... D don't. Please. Please, Jagex. Don't. Now I have not done this in a trio or duo, but I can give you guys the solo experience rates I achieved. They are on screen now. Now keep in mind, some of these experience rates will vary depending on your gear stats and maybe even group size. Now you may be surprised at the absurdly high experience rates, but yes, this is really that good experience. The only thing that really affects your experience here, apart from your gear and stats, is when you encounter mini bosses, you will take away from that experience per hour because you have to kill the mini boss, which is worth it for the dungeoneering tokens alone, and the chance for a 50 million GP drop. But yeah, this is, even if it's just 700k experience per hour, and you're doing this, lower than the recommended stats. That's still absurdly high experience, like the Abyss is 550 to 600k experience per hour AFK, and if this is double that, although it's not AFK, and it makes you money, I think this is really the best method you can do right now. So for those of you waiting on how much money or how much profit this actually is, here you go, and that's a chest of just one hour of me trying it out with a Noxious Scythe and a Steel Titan. Yes, I was tryharding and doing my best. I encountered around, I think, six or seven mini bosses. I'm not entirely sure, so that's 30k dungeoneering tokens as well. In fact, let's just take a detailed look at the loot, shall we? So of that loot, most of the money is again in the alcohol salvage and the relics. Sadly, I didn't get any rare relics in this one hour. I did actually get one before. I tested one hour fully with a Noxious Scythe and, you know, that's one mil extra GP. So consistently, this should be 4.5 mil GP per hour. 
If you're lower stats, let's say 3.5 mil GP per hour. And if you're very lucky, I think you should be able to get 7 million GP an hour if you're lucky with those rare relics. Now think back for a second. Over 1 million experience per hour and this much money per hour consistently. That's very very impressive. Apart from that, I also gained apparently 117,000 engineering experience. I think that's actually from the mini bosses and such. Not entirely sure over there. I don't know if I had bonus experience, but if I don't, well, 117k engineering experience per hour. I'll take that. I think I encountered a mini boss around once every two or three runs. And there's only one mini boss you can really encounter, which is Bossy McBossface, which has that 15 million GP rare sword drop. So I got around 30,000 dungeoneering tokens in that hour, which again is nice to have as an add on as well. So, all in all, this is definitely the best method in the game for training. In fact, if I'm being entirely honest, I'm really surprised there's such a thing in game. This is, I'm not complaining or anything, but this is really, really good. If you can make that much money, which is better than most Slayer creatures per hour, if you're AFK, like Abyssal Demons, it's just blown out of the water experience-wise, and it's higher money per hour as well, as you don't need to use any high-tier gear really to do this, apart from your weapon, and maybe some overloads, and some food costs every hour, and some prey potions. <laughs> this, this is a really good method. And, like said previously, you can also disassemble the common relics for inventing components and just look at those rolling like that. Cheap, nice little components. And if you're an Iron Man watching this video, you can finally get a good variety of different components because since the mining of Smithery work, I'm pretty sure that Iron Man have had a tough time collecting components because first of all, the shop prices have increased. So buying stuff or doing shop runs for invention parts is expensive in terms of coins because Iron Man, of course, have a tough time collecting coins and you can no longer smith a lot of items really quickly to disassemble yourself. So this is a good way of now obtaining components. And on that bombshell, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.